eyes to open for him. So now she said, oh, I've taught him a lesson. He's had to stand in the rain a little bit. He's got a little bit wet. He's got a bit of a dew on his hair. It's like, oh, now I'll go let him in. I was arose to open for my beloved, and my hands dripped with myrrh. Like, she's back in the game now. Actually, I've taught him a lesson. We on now. My fingers with flowing myrrh on the handles of the bolt. I opened for my beloved, but my beloved had left. He was gone. My heart sank as his departure. She thought, I'm going to teach him a little bit of tough love. I'm going to keep him outside for a while. Meanwhile, he's been working his whole day off for her. Because he loves her and he feels like that's part of it. You even heard the couples talking. Actually, Derek saying, I was working for the marriage. So what happens when he's standing at the gate? What happens in your heart if that was you? In my heart, I'm a king of self-justification. I work hard. I took her on honeymoon. I have done this. I have done this. I have done. I don't need this. Boom. You know, the reality is most, if we rationalize, we push them into different corners, they're just small little things that maybe look like little foxes. And um, he didn't feel like he thought, even though it worked hard, he, he maybe slipped up and he maybe messed up, but he thought he'd come home and actually the love of the months since honeymoon will be amazing. He didn't feel like he would get attacked at the gate and locked out. You know, the challenge is most men and women don't leave physically, but they leave. Some of you have left emotionally, intimately, left. And maybe you were the one who chased the other one away. So I'm just going to teach him a lesson. I'm just going to make a point. I don't know how to do it for confrontation, so I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to change the locks. I'm going to change the access points. I'm going to make it harder. He thought you just keep them out just long enough in the rain. Just hold that one thing that you won't let go of. At the time, they slipped up. And then when you thought the time was right, you went to the door, but they've left. I want to tell you, little fox number two, I'm not the master at the potter's table of my spouse's wife. My spouse's life. <laughs> yeah, lighten it up a little bit. There's one master, his name is Jesus. See, the minute I assume that role and I think, I'm just going to keep them at the gate. No, the Bible says, don't, don't hold out on things like intimacy. Why? Because actually, you aren't the potter's hand in your spouse's life. The problem with the seven-year itch is most people think, I'll marry this person, but actually I'll shape them. I just need a few years. Let them come close to my love, closely, and actually I'll change them, eh? Sometimes I'll teach them by keeping them outside, keeping them at a distance. Maybe it's not actually a locked gate, but it's just a distance. Maybe the distance in real terms is just this far, but it's just as distant. And yet your spouse is left. I would say often the reason we're trying to change our spouse is actually because we're worshiping an idol, and that idol is me. And she or he is not serving me, so me gets offended, and I've got to worship my idol by trying to change the person I think could bring me that. It's a challenge, and we all do it. 